Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. All righty. Oh, ah. I don't know what a haver is, but uh, he's on my knee. Haver Supply. Thanks yes. for that. I mean, uh, normal town, California. Life haver. Uh, is, uh, did, you, did you write a note? I didn't see a note. We, we appreciate it. Suicide note. Oh, yeah. Look at all this Ransom stuff. Ransom note. Sent. My father's gay. Love this. Uh, Thank you. So many nice things. Look at this. Two's gay, onesie. That's, that's adorable. Amazing. Someone sent this. Is this also haver? Georgia Tennis. Yes. The Thrill of McGill. Ah, uh, McGill. Oh, that's the back. I see. Shane McGill is. Yeah, boy, if you got too many, just start giving those to Veter. Because uh, not his kids, but him. He's oh, little. yeah, he can wear them. So, yeah, thank you for the Haver Supply from Normaltown, California. We're here. This is Tuesdays with Stories. Don't. Chuck died in a car wreck. We got uh, old Jason Katz. Ooh. On the ones and twos back there. Don't be a, don't be a player, Haver. But yeah, we got Katz here. He, you know him from uh, directing all 13 of your specials, editing mine, Sam's, the other guy, Steve Byrne, killing it. And now he's here slumming it with Chuck's ear jizz in your ear. Yeah, he looks very off put. Uh, but I guess you have no microphone. You can't input, which is you perfect. Know, the way it should be. But yes. uh, yeah, you got you wearing Chuck's ear pods over there, and it, you just looked horrified. And. How do you feel about putting an AirPod in someone else's? I'd rather you dick in my ass. It's it's a little intimate. All that goo and wax and orange placenta, schmegma, all that is right going right into your body. Well, even the AirPod person that stole my AirPods, they took those out right away. And this oh. is a thief. This is a common thief. Yes. Who's still like, ew. Like yeah. she's like, I'm taking this man's property. It belongs to me now. I don't give a fuck about him. But she's also like, I don't want the ear thing. Yeah, she's not a monster. You know, I'll steal and uh, break the the fabric of society, but I'm not gross. Yeah, you don't want the ear thing. But I, how do you feel about deodorant? When people borrow your deodorant, that never bothered me. That I'm okay with. I'll do it because it's a click click. Uh huh. So it's a new batch. I mean, sure, you're still getting some plastic to skin, but it, it's a click click there. I feel like there's some new jizz coming out. No, but you're using the top. The top is there, but I think the the fact that it's a new application helps. I guess. If you're talking the gel, like the gel wipes off. Yeah. The regular deodorant deodorant. Well, what are you talking, powder? No, like regular deodorant. Like, you know, what do you it got? doesn't Speed wipe stick? off. I got an old spice right here. Oh, yeah, that's... I mean, the click doesn't... You can that's click no it higher, click. but yeah. Yeah, you're right. I guess it's like a toothbrush. Well, no, a toothbrush is gross because it's the mouth. The mouth is bad. Type 2. There you go. Like, would you take this and put it on you? I would. Right after... Yeah, because armpit to armpit, I don't give a fuck. I mean, it's not, it's not great. I don't love it, but it, I would do it. Well, yeah, I don't love it. I'm not partying. I'm not like, ooh, okay. I got some armpit. But uh, the ear is gross because it collects brown, waxy shit. Yeah, and it's going inside you. I think the ear for the man is our pussy. Because, mm. you know, you put that uh, that Q-tip in, you go, oh, oh, oh. you know, you, you, you start jizzing a little. That's the closest we'll get. Even the butthole is a little, little dicey. Butthole's gross. Yeah, I wouldn't go straight from your butthole to my butthole. Oh. With a finger or ass or dick. But you would go mine. You just wouldn't go mine than yours. <laughs> yes, I'd fuck okay. you in the ass, but not fuck my own ass. I get that. Well, there's also, people brush this off, but if you bl- bang a girl in the ass and then <whistles> go to the top shelf upstairs and put it in the, the, the vag hole, uh-huh. there's a lot of problems there. The, the, oh, yeah. You're mixing ponds. You're mixing uh, chemicals. The, the pH balance is off. If you, what you're trying to say is poo in the pussy is bad, I'm 100% on board. I mean, that's, there's all kinds of that's what uh, I'm saying. chemicals and... Um, feces, feces. And uh, what else do you call it? Uh, particles? Yes. That's what particles. A UTI, yeah. <laughs> that's what a UTI is, usually, is, is a little, little feces going in the, the piece. No. I'm telling you, that's a lot of it. 
No. Fecal matter. No. Fecal lives matter. is a urinary tract infection. You can't get it. Uh, it comes, a lot of time so comes from feces. you I got shit on my dick? If you get a UTI. That's a small percentage of times. One okay. percent, two percent, maybe. I don't know. Hey, the one percenters. Maybe it's urine or something. Because I fucked my wife in the, in the, in the twat. As hard as I can every morning. Yeah. And every once in a while, she get a UTI. But it's not like I was wiping my ass with my cock. Well, I think uh, for a lady, it's different. I think if a oh. guy gets a UTI, I which is see. which happens. Sure. Uh, a lot of time, it's a little bit of the old... Poo poo. But how does poo poo getting in the in the, in the track? Poo poo's all over. It's a poo poo platter. The subway pole, your oh. keyboard, your pants, your underwear, your fingers, your lips, your eyes, your nose, Chuck's earbuds. The very pants I was returning. I wish we had a camera on cats. He's he's schwitzing over there. He's he's like sobbing. Uh-oh. He's squinting. Welcome to the gulag. It's nine hundred degrees in here. It's Bikram Pod. We don't know why we do that. It's a it's a concentration camp. There's a one blower and it's uh it's not hooked up. Now, Katz is horrified by the poster. It's adorable. You came in, you're like, we got to fix the poster. And I'm like, no, we don't know how to do that. What are you, crazy? That's like going into Palestine and saying, hey, we got to get rid of these Jews. It's going to be a long time. There's nude photos everywhere. There's boxes of stuff. There's just a pile of trash. My suit is here from some sketch oh, yeah. we did. Oh, yeah, lawsuit. Which I should I should bring that home. I should do it tonight. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring that now because I want to go to Chipotle. Ah, I'd love to get Chipotle. Yes, all right. If by I... the way, you saved the day the other day. I was here in my gratitude. List. Tell the folks at home what the captain did. Well, I mean, first of all, we were sitting in line. At, we're sitting in line at great film, underrated. I love that movie. That's underrated. I just rewatched it. Hell of a pick. Uh, captain True Phillips. Story. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but there's, a, there's also a, like a Swedish version of a similar kind of not of Captain Phillips, but of a pirate takeover. That's also fantastic. Ah, oh, Swedish I don't know fish. If it's Swedish. It's something. Okay. But anyway, we went to Chipotle post show and then uh, you know, we're sitting in line just trashing our closest friends. Just that guy sucks. He's a piece of shit. He blows. You made Cats the list, is a Cats. bad director. Yeah. <laughs> and uh decent play. So we're sitting there and uh then I'm very good at clocking people. Whether you it be uh, a robber, a criminal, a thief, a, it comes from my Sears days, whatever it Profile, is. Profile, baby. Which I always say, people are like, oh, you're gay, you're a pussy, you suck at comedy. But I'm saying I'm streetwise. Ah, street smart. Street smarts. And uh, so I'm like, you know, that guy's a piece of shit. His act sucks. He's a hack. Yeah. And uh, and then this guy comes in. I go, oh, we got to be quiet. This guy's a fan. I can tell. Hey, we should call you Rolex because you can clock and you can watch. I just went, oh, oh there we go. let's keep it quiet. So then we switched gears and, oh, that was violent. Wow. I got right on the corner on the bone, the cranium. Yeah, that was, and it was the bottom Ooh. crispy part. Woo. I got the bird tweet, 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 tweet. Couple stars cooking there. Yeah, that wasn't good. You should, too bad you didn't have your Haver supply hat. Oh, on. I need a hard hat. If only. Uh, yeah. I have no idea who these people are or what they supply. <laughs> supply and demand was not high. Well, you didn't <laughs> you supply it. But... <laughs> so anyways, Don't we got quiet. Then we get our food, our burritos. And we, by the way, we still probably went back into talking like whatever. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're a loud guy. I got to work on that. Yeah, you got to uh, uh, like a... Rawr, rawr. You're not as bad as others, but you're not a whispery guy. Yeah, I hate the whisper, uh, but I hate a loud talk too. So I try to be in the mi- in the middle, but I do have a projection. Very projecty. So, anyways, we go, we sit down, and the guy that was right behind us walks up and says, "Hey, huge fan of both of you. I listen to the pod. My father's gay. He auditioned for our, our film. Yeah, it how crazy really is something. that? And uh, I didn't have the heart to tell him. We never even looked at it, but uh, <laughs> but I knew it. And then he sat." Next to us, which was very sweet, very nice guy, very handsome boy. All the tables were full. There was just that row in the middle of a, like a tall tops or whatever, two tops, where you got to just sit on either side. It's just a long row. And he sat directly catty corner, like if you were a bishop on a chessboard, <laughs> right diagonal. And it was just us, and we were getting into it. We were really chopping it up. We were right in the eye of the storm of the shit talking. And this guy is just absorbing like a sponge. He could have put the headphones in, but he didn't. Free podcast. I mean, he's sitting much closer to me than you are yes, right now. Yes, yes. And uh, but so we just here. Had to, we had to go real like my favorite color is blue. Yeah, you don't say. That I was like orange. One point we were trashing one guy, and I changed the name to another guy, which I don't know if that helps. Yeah, but that guy's less known than the other guy. True, true. 
So, okay. And then we just started combining the two names. Yes. And then we were like, oh, yeah, I was hanging out with old Theo, uh, you know, cats. <laughs> and, uh, that was something. <laughs> but anyways, it was, uh, it was fun, but uh, I appreciate you sticking around. Because if you had left, it would have just been us one-on-one. We would have had to play chess or something you would have had to interact it was too awkward not to it's like an orgy you gotta you gotta make a move at some point you can't just stare they get mad at that but nice guy good to see you thanks for listening and uh good to see you yeah yeah we're out in the wild jerry i mean we're we're amongst the 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 walkers but you gotta be careful now because everyone knows you can't just be chatting it's like tom cruise he can't be like meryl streep can suck my dick she's an asshole anti-semite piece of shit because the cab driver's like Mm, yes, really? yes. Interesting. Yeah, that's why I, I say anonymity is a gift. People want to be famous. I have fame scared. This is a good level. I always say I like this level. You don't want to be the guy at the airport getting swarmed or, or chewing out a United Gate agent because you made him check a bag and tweeting about it. You don't want to be that guy. No, you don't. No, you don't. All right. Ideally, you don't have any success at all, you know? Yeah, Just that's a big the key. failure. It'll happen. We're, we're, we'll, we'll get there. The, the way down is going to be swift and mighty. Yeah. Best case scenario, each special does worse than the last. That's, that's what you what need. You, there you go. That's the key to happiness. But any farts, uh, how you doing? Good to see you. Long time, no semen. Yes. Uh, ahoy, matey. We're on the poop deck. Uh, let me just say this. Two things to run by you. Yeah. All right. Went to Soul Joel's Comedy Cabana. I don't know what he's calling it. Soul Joel's Yuck It Up Town. Whatever. Whatever he's got over there. It's a comedy club. It's in a it's in a country club or a resort. You've seen that. Yeah, yeah. We did that. We did a live Tuesdays there. Yeah. It was like the green room, but we did the room outside. It's that room, that right? That room. Yes. It's in Pottstown. <laughs> or Royersford, whatever you want to call it. But we drove up me and Doug Smith. Love Doug Smith. Great we go guy. Way back. We used to be drinking buddies. Boy, did he booze. That guy could really tilt a few. Oh, you got that straight. So I go meet him out in BK, because that's the move. You know, he goes, Hey, we gotta leave, but if you come here, we'll 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 jet. If uh-huh. I go pick you up, it's all over. Right. So I go, all right, I go way out to Prospect Park, which is Ugh. beautiful out there. Yuck. I mean, it's brownstone lined up, the park in the background, tree lined. It's uh, it's clean. It's families. It's lovely. Yeah, it's an hour and a half from Manhattan. The, the subway. You got you got people playing the knockout game. You got dumb hipsters with painted on jeans, fedora hats, it and was, bad takes. I agree with the with most of it, but the hip it's past the hipsters. Oh, this really? is like adults with children and jobs. Oh, okay. So they're it's a little different, and they just want a good neighborhood. They want a safe. They want it clean and uh he's got a eight-year-old yes which is insane and a wife and uh he's sober now he's off the weed he's going to the meetings the whole thing his wife is uh like nine years older than him too wow yeah she's like 75 wow well good for her to have a kid at uh 67 66 six i can't do math no i've just calcula you might have been right though ah all right so we get we go out there we meet we pick up and we have that I have a theory. I can't wait. I hate small talk, as you do. Sure. Uh, cold out. Oh, boy, how about those uh, Hamas? You know, whatever. With comics, it should be like AA. If I'm meeting you for the first time, go, I'm Joe and I'm an alcoholic. Right. I want to hear your worst thing. I suck dick for crack. Now nah, we're off and running. Yeah, let's go deep. Quick. Yes. Right out I of the game. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear about your whatever, your, your kids, your cats. Who gives a shit? So, cats. So we uh, start driving. We we bond. We get in there, and uh, he goes up. First of all, Soul Joel's show sold out. Killer. He does it right. He won't let anybody near you. He gives you food right away. There's snacks in the room. There's a fridge with water and soda. There's a bathroom in there. Great guy. Great guy, Joel. And uh, just working out material. I got Raj opening. Now, how about this? Raj is a, of Indian persuasion. Oh. Raj Balani, funny guy, good comic. Oh. Um, he's uh, he's opening up the show. And I go, hey, Raj, you're, you're a big, fat, dirty Indian. Let me run this by you there, uh, dot, not feather. And I go, I got an Indian joke. Does that, is that offensive? Does that too, is that over the line? You told him the joke. He knows the joke, I yeah. See. And he goes, 
I don't care because I'm a comic, which I love to hear. Don't you love that? Of course. That's what comics should say. Well, any comic that's like, no, I don't like that. Come on. You're off the, the team. Yeah, get the hell out of here. Yeah, you've been struck from the record. So, uh-oh, Katz is leaving. He's out. What do you, see a bug? Oh, he got up, looked at the wall, and sat back down. Okay, uh, so I go, is this offensive? And he goes, I don't care, but it's going to piss off some, some Indians. Sure. Much like smallpox. And I go, uh, well, uh, what, what do you think? He goes, it's just kind of easy. It's like an easy racist line. Mm. It's, it's like calling Jews cheap. Uh-huh. Which, like, we all know the stereotype, but it's been done to death. It's old. It's, it's, it's a little worn out. Sure. Hack. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh-huh. So we go, what about this, this, and this? And he goes, now nah, that's a little more updated and a little less racist. So we changed it and it worked. All right. Because that's the thing. I don't want to offend the Indians. Sure. You just, but it was getting a laugh, but maybe it was getting a laugh for the wrong reason. You're nice to the freaks. Yes, yes. Let's that's a Seinfeld reference. I'm not calling Indians freaks, of course. I'm sure. Just referencing sure. a television program. Uh, but yeah, so that was a nice moment because y- you can learn from other groups. A laugh and learn. Council culture, yes. not cancel culture. Aha. Uh-huh. And Raj, uh, he's a funny guy, right? Yeah. All good, right. Good guy, good comic. So that that was helpful. And then uh, two shows, killer. We drive back that night. Oh, uh, wait. Okay. Now, here's, here's what I wanted to run by you. Please. Stick it in my ass. The life insurance. Aha. Uh-huh. It's, it's a craw in my thorn. What uh-huh. is it? Thaw in your crown. Crow in my ass. What's the term? Cock in your thorn. Thorn in, thorn my in paw, your paw. But there's craw. Something with a craw. Craw. Thorn in your craw. No, that ain't it. There's thorn in paw. A craw in my thorn. That's what I said. A craw daddy. No, Bella What's craw? Thorn. Craw dad. Craw fish. It's, uh, it sticks in my craw. Ah, it's stuck in your craw. That's annoyed by something. It's really stuck in my Yeah, but craw. what is that? Craw. I don't know what a craw. Look up craw, There's will you? Craw fish. Yeah. Oil. There's a uh, army crawl. Yeah, crawl is a lot bigger than craw. Yeah, craw. But it's one of those things. There's another one of those that's like it's actually this. It's like oh, um, like nip it in the butt. It's yeah, actually bud. It's bud. Bundy. Uh, there's another Dead one Bundy. like that. Um, the thing is actually that thing. Budweiser. Yeah, yeah, there's a few of those. It cha- Mandela or whatever. It changes over time. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It just says to disturb the peace of mind of someone, especially repeated and disagreeable acts. But we don't know what craw is. But you is. got a g- craw definition. C-R-A-W. Yeah. Def. Uh, it says something that sticks in your craw you are very annoyed by and cannot ah. accept it because you think it's wrong or unfair. What That's if you right. Google image a craw? Well, we don't want to get all stuck right, in the right, craw. Right. Here. Now we're looking at photos, but craws. Point is, a thorn in my ass still... is this life insurance. They they turned me down because of weed. They turned me down because of mushrooms. I posted a clip. I go, I got a DUI in high school, and the the insurance lady hit me up. That says a crow. It says auto corrected. That's craw images. So a craw looks exactly like a crow. I don't buy it. <laughs> And then there's a crawfish. All right, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Was, uh, Brandon Lee shot himself over the craw. I don't think so. All right, so deep cut. Life insurance. I posted a clip. I got a DUI in, in college. Blah, blah, and my life insurance lady's like, "What are you doing? This is gonna." And I'm like, "What are these guys? Hawks? They're all over all my shit. They they watch the Rogan, the Protect Our Parks. They saw us popping mushrooms like p- Plan Bs, and they're all over me." Oh God, they're cross. I don't know. I've never tried to go for the life insurance, but you see, you can't lie, or you do lie, or you, you get in trouble if you lie. It's lie. insurance fraud, I guess. Lie all day because they'll never know unless you're doing Protect Our Parks. Right. But you're sober. You're not popping pills on camera. Well, I got a high BP and cholesterol. Should I not say? Oh, I said that on here. This show's small. We're not That's going true. anywhere. That's true. But, uh, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm exercising, and I smoke cigars, too. Yeah, yeah. So that's bad. Yeah, but you'll you'll fly through that test with f- flying monkeys. Maybe. I hope not. I hope not. There's not flying monkeys is what I meant. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess I got to go, and you get there. That way, if you die, you, your wife gets money or something like that? Something like that, yeah. I think. But it's, sh- it's short money. It's like 12 bucks a month or something. Yeah, yeah. then you get yeah. back it's, it's no bueno. a month. So I go, I go, all right, what do I need to do? And they go, get another physical. So I go, Jesus Christ. So I go to get a physical. It's a whole thing. 
And I go, I'm in there doing the, the I'm doing the uh, the swab, the whatever. And they go, uh, what is that thing where they, the temperature ah, on the thermometer. finger. The th- yeah, that's how they do it now. Right. Used to be in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little ass. clamp or the ass. Don't confuse the two. No, and don't do one after the other. Yeah. But I go, while I'm in here, give me an STD test. Okay. What do I got to lose except finding out I have AIDS? And a marriage. True. So I go, give me an STD test. I'm very confident. I've been a good queef. I just want to, it's good to know. And if if I'm positive, I, I'll want to know. And if I'm negative, I'll feel great. Sure. So you pee in the cup. That's how they do it. Uh-huh. And then you, you scroll, you screw it up. You give it to the lady. It's dripping. <laughs> And she she goes, all right, well, send the results in two days. And you go, great. I do a hop, skip, and a jump out of there. I get a lollipop. I'll tell you, it's like Chris Rock's joke. You start reflecting. Of course. But when's the last time you had an STD test? I mean, uh, was it that long ago? Probably two years, a year. Okay. Well, you've been married that whole year. Been married the whole year, but, you know, I'm going to sex clubs. I'm touching my dick on Toilet bowls, I uh-huh. fucked you in the ass. You know, there's things. Sure. So I go, oh, I did go to a sex club. Did my dick plop out and hit the, the table we were fucking on? Yeah. You know, and there was a guy jerking next to me. Could I have gotten some waff of hep C? I don't think so. But you start uh, catastrophizing. Okay. I always say I wish the brain was as creative normally as it is when I'm scared. Right. Yeah, it's hard to harness that. Yes, fear is a very motivational feeling. Fear is your only god. Mm. Or whatever. Yes. Taylor Swift. Fuck everything and run. That's it. Fear. It's an acronym. Or face everything and recover. Remember No Fear? Oh, yeah, that was big. Yeah, that sucked. That was huge. I didn't get it. I didn't get Even as a 10-year-old, I was like, nah, that's not for me. No, I didn't even like the typography the or whatever. The font. It was bad. It was like when ESPN2 first came out and had like the Swoopy 2, and you're like, ugh. <laughs> I hate a Swoopy 2. No, I fucked a couple Swoopy 2s. <laughs> you dropped off a few as well in the toilet. Great. Oh, man, I've been taking some huge shit. I got to show you. Please, Swoop 2 Real me. logs. Cats, you like photos of dumps? <laughs> I'll text you a few. <laughs> All right, he's just giggling. He didn't even answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Swoopy two is, is no no bueno. Uh, Swoopy even, Tuesday <laughs> with stories. Even uh, even when people had the boob inspector, I didn't love it. Oh yeah, federal boob inspector. I like the attempt. I like that it's irreverent. But I remember even being a nine year old going like, ah, that's easy. No, it sucked. Yeah. All right. Like- so. Fear, fear monger, fear, fear breeds creativity. I mean, your brain is going off in these crazy places. But I got the test back, full neg, neg. Uh, What's that language? Yeah, <laughs> neg or knocking, whatever it was, it was great. And then, but here's the clinker. Clink it. So I'm in there, and uh, the guy goes, "You want to get an AIDS test?" And I go, "I don't need an AIDS test. I'm good. You know, I, I don't fuck with needles. I'm straight. I'm gay. I'm good." And he goes. Well, maybe I should check your junk. Check the junk? Come on. This is weird, right? It's a little strange. Well, I guess it's cancer, ball cancer. Yeah. Because I got all kinds of lumps and swoops and swashes down there. Well, that's what I'm getting at. All right. I don't want to... I got the bag of worms, as you know. Yes, same. This is a barrel of monkeys, but I don't want to... There's another wrinkle to this. There's plenty of wrinkles down there. (laughs) Betty White downtown. So. cut. So, uh, the doctor doing the inspecting, uh-huh. the jiggling, the jongling, very gay. Really? I'm talking flamboyant, uh, <coughs> Fire Island, you know, Studio 54 gay. Wow. Now, why'd you get the gay doctor? Uh, you get who you get. <laughs> you get who you get. You can uh, read some reviews. What, what is it, a, a brothel? I'll take that one. No, yeah, you go yeah. in, they, they, you sit in a room, and a guy comes in. Well, you look up. You go to the website, and you read the reviews, and the face. You look at the face. I go woman. I'm all female. Really? I prefer a female. Oh, interesting. I want a woman, the soft touch of a, a, a woman. I like a that. Nice, you know, they're just a, there's none of that, like, what do you got here? 
Right, right. Uh, looks like shit. Yeah, you gotta get, uh, you gotta cut some weight there. You, I want a lady with nice nails who's like, yeah, well, you could stand to lose a little weight, and that's then I want to feel point. like I could have sex with her if I had to. Sure, in sure. In a pinch, you know. Yeah, it's a good point. And plus, uh, well, this guy was almost a lady. Oh, I mean, it was boy. right there, right at the in the red. But um, pink. It, it, <laughs> and uh, one of the pink, but it was. It was a little. It added a layer. Uh huh. It's already a little jarring. T- drop and trow. By the way, the nurse is behind me. I b- got my back to her. Well, you have to have someone else in the room now. Is that right? Yeah, you can't be one on one getting oh. naked. Okay. Because then it's your word against his word. Ooh, well, or I had her the word. camera rolling. But she's the Asian gal's behind me on the ones and twos. Holy yeah, she took all the uh, you know vitals uh-huh. or viters, and uh, so I got this guy, and he's knee or uh, Kaepernick on the floor, <laughs> face to junk, junk to face. And here's the here's the rub: is my dick looks like shit. Like I don't know what. It already looks like ass. You didn't groom it before. You weren't uh, expecting to be judged by a by a lady boy. Yeah, I got a I got an acorn in a bush. My balls are down to my knees. There's wrinkles. There's googly eyes and uh, wacky worms, gummy stuff all over it. Uh, there's a hair going that way, a hair going. It's all pipes. It's it's horrific down there. So you wanted to impress. Wow. You're hoping to. You wanna you wanna come come to the show with a little prep. Well, you don't want bad word of mouth out there. It's a public fig. <laughs> I got a fig tree down here, and uh, it was bad. It was bad. So I'm like, how could you diagnose this? It's already it's like going to a like a condemned house and being like, ah, hey, you're fine. I believe me, I know my dick is. Uh, first of all, I have the contusion from masturbation, famously. Sure. And it's also twisted because I just jerked so hard with the right hand. I'm all. Twist, it's off kilter. It's like the leaning tower. My whole dick is like facing this way. Yeah, due east. It looks like when jets peel off from each other where they're like... Oh, yeah. Like that. It's kind of like half cocked. Right. Right. intended. Black ops down there. You got got the bottom gun. Black cock down. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm a little twisted myself. I'm twisted T. My dick's been... Yours is is veering. Mine is... Like... If this is your dick, sure, it's that. Yes, you have that. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. I got the... Right, right. So I'm going left. Oh, okay. Do yeah. you jerk off left-handed? I do. My dick is uh, liberal. It <laughs> leans left, and uh, it's you know purple and twisty and wacky and scarred up. Not scarred up, but wrinkles, just wear and tear. Of course, it's, it's a forty-year-old dick. Yeah, it's, it's catcher's mitt. It's been through the ringer. A lot of ladies, a lot of men, a lot of kids. The whole thing. That's an old dick. Pets, yeah, it's a, it's a vintage dong. And uh, this guy's <laughs> saluting it. I mean, he's like, he's like right here. It's like if my dick's a peephole, he's, he's got a Jehovah's Witness on the other end. He's really looking. And it was a rough scene. But he was like, all right, you're good. Okay, good. And that was Did it. Did he feel the bag? He around? felt the bag. Because I always, I, I always think about that. Remember Tom Green got cancer and he did a whole thing yes. about feeling the balls. And I feel my balls, but I don't know what I'm feeling for. But I think there's a, it'll be like a lump, a bumpy lump. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But it's all lumps. That's what I feel. I'm like, it's, it's pretty lumpy. Yeah, it's a sack of lumps. It's, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. I gotta go. I gotta. I've gotta go get a colonoscopy. All that stuff. I'm gonna do it all. You gotta get the camera up your ass. Well, Ronan just did it, and it didn't seem so bad. Well, he, he likes said, it up the ass, though. That's <laughs> he likes to get pegged, literally. That's true. Well, he had, he, he was looking like forward like to it. Three watery shits, and he was a little loopy the next day, but fine. Loopy. He was sashaying down Sixth <laughs> Avenue. He was probably. Uh, Skipping my Lou. Yeah, he was like Jeff Bridges, uh, the dude, after he gets tested. <laughs> He's banging on the ceiling. <laughs> Great film. Uh, Lebowski? Lebowski. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, just a wacky, wacky Thursday. What, what day is it? Today's Thursday. Yeah, it's a wacky Thursday. You went today? Yeah, that was uh, today. Oh, wow. This is junk. Well, this, this clusterfuck right now was viewed <whistles> front and center cinescope. By uh, Old Gate Charlie. Oh, jeez. Nice. Well, uh, give me his number, because uh, sure. I have a doctor already, but I wouldn't mind chatting him up just for fun. Sweet guy. Nice guy. Okay. I have a... Huh? You showered? 
Howard? No, no. I didn't know he was going to look at it. I figured I'm going in for a couple of vitals with the... <laughs> well, you got to shower before the doctor. That's insane. No, it's like eating before surgery. You don't do it. Did I tell you about my uh, dermatologist? If you need a dermatologist, I got one. She's oh. uh, she's kind and sweet and literally the most attractive woman I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh, well, yeah. Give me that number. Yeah. I, I go there, and uh, that's the same thing. I had my wife, Kate, because I talked about how beautiful she is. Mm. And Sarah's like, I'll go to your appointment with you. Uh, it was a little suspicious. She was like, let me come by. I'll see what's oh. going on there. She's like, I want to be supportive. I'm like, yeah. interesting. You didn't. I, I got a fat cow you know, Sharapidus, she didn't come to that appointment. Yeah, good point. But uh, yeah, that's nice. Is, she's jealous. It's a hell of a dermatologist. She she cares about you. She has, she doesn't want to be. She's threatened. Yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah, it's fun. But a dermatologist who's hot, it sounds fun. Same deal. It sounds fun because you're like, all right, I got a beautiful woman I'm talking to. Sure. But then they do the inspection. They have to look at your your asshole and your dick, and your, it's just a. It's I got a rash all over it. Yeah. It's not good. I had to get creams. Ah, uh, you got creamed. Yeah. Cremation. Cream corn. Cats just looks appalled by all this. Have you never heard the show before? <laughs> this is the show. I think he hates it. He hates us. Yeah. All right. I can tell by the way you're staring down. It's stuck in your craw. So anyways. So, so yeah, that that's that's my jizz, but I, I have a, a mole on my head. On the head of your dick? Not a mole, like a freckle or uh-huh. a, a birthmark, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's a little off-putting. If I was in a lineup, I'd be ruined. A birthmark Norman. Yeah, so he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! And I was like, that's been there since birth. And he was like, oh, okay. So that was a weird moment. Wow, God. Hey, folks, Tuesdays of Stories brought to you by Blue Chew. You know I love the BC when you're, you've worked hard to charm your way into someone's pants. You want things to stay hard. So up your confidence and your dick with Blue Chew. It's a unique online service that delivers ED medicine right to your door with the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. But at a fraction of the cost, you could take Blue Chew at any time of the day or night. So no matter when you need an extra boost, Blue Chew's got you covered. I've taken it. It goddamn works. It tastes pretty good. And the beauty of Blue Chew is the word chew. These other ones, they taste like ass. And you got to swallow them down and pray to God something happens quick. Blue Chew, chew it up, taste it good, and it works immediately. Blue Chew is totally online, so you skip the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, or waiting at the pharmacy like a weirdo. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our gays. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Just pay five clams for shipping. What a deal. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TUESDAYS to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety info. And thanks, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the pod. Hey, folks. It's uh, Tuesdays with Stories. <laughs> Chuck, hold your breath. I'm going to read. Or read. I got COVID. But I'll tell you who doesn't have COVID. Sheath underwear. Mm. Hey, folks. If you're tired of the chafing from your gross, sweaty boxers, you're going to want to listen up. Make the switch to sheath underwear. Sheath stops chafing and sweat with an incredible design. These babies are made with two pouches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. <laughs> it's Greg here. One's for your dick, and the other is for your balls. These pouches keep things separated, so there's no more peeling your dick off your thigh. Gotta keep them separated. Ah, uh, great tune, great album, great band. I love sheath underwear. I'm wearing sheath underwear. Mark's wearing sheath underwear. Oh, yeah. uh, Chuck, do you ever get your sheath underwear? He finally got some sheath underwear. He's mm. wearing it on his face right now because I'm infected with COVID. Yeah. I'm sorry, Chuck. If you get sick, I'll send you a bonus. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, Robert Patton designed it. Robert Patton, we always see him when he comes to uh, Skankfest. He's the best. He gives us free underwear. He's loaded us up. We absolutely love him. He's an Iraq veteran, uh, and he designed the underwear there. As you know, separates your dicks and balls, Mm. keeps it all clean. I love it. Right now, go to sheathunderwear.com and use the code TWOSGAYS to get 20% off your first order. That is a chunk Plus, Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Get Sheath Underwear. Support the show. Support your balls. Thank you. Yeehaw! Thank you, Spider. It's terrifying. Now we have to go do the stuff. We're old. We're, you know what I mean? I'm like, we got to get it all taken care of. I know, because we're on the down slope. You're goddamn right. We're dying. 
What, what is that? They heard the 20s, the 30s. In your 30s, the 40s. your body starts to break down. In your 40s, it starts to die. Uh, it might be 40s, 50s. Maybe 40s, it breaks down. 50s, it starts to die. Let's go with that. Let's go with that for Yeah, a, but it's like a, we're not improving. No, this is it. It's just. It's like that Louis bit. You know, hey, you got to stretch every day. All right, how long? Oh, no, you just do that now. That's something you do now. Yeah. Yeah. If we're, I mean, like, we're like halfway through life if we're lucky. Best case scenario, we're halfway through. Yeah, Biden's 80. Yeah. And he doesn't look so great. Although Mick Jagger's 80. Is he 80? I'm going to go 80. He's close. Oh, I think he's 80 this year. I think he was born in uh, 43. That counts. God damn. My dad's 40, born in 47. Yeah, he must be 80, Mick Jagger. He's born in July of 43, I believe. Still touring, by the way. Yeah, and I, I mean, I saw him. There, He's dancing around and moving around, moving and shaking. So I believe he just fucked a lady and got her pregnant. Well, you got De Niro and Pacino pumping out kids. You got to respect that, I guess. I don't know. I have. I don't have to. I, I don't respect it at all. I think it's a fucking piece of shit move, really. Well, if the women want it, I don't know. I guess, but you're just giving a son with no father. But I'm sure she'll meet some other guy. I guess yeah. he's, like a, he's like a sperm donor. There you go. Basically. And you could do worse sperm than old Jaggy. Jag off. This sperm right here. Mm-hmm. Talking to me. Well, you got about <coughs> six minutes before you got a little whippersnapper well, coming out of your ass. By the time the time the crowd hears this, my baby will be old. He'll be a week old. Wait, I thought it was uh, the thirty thirtieth. No, it's shifted up. Oh no, this thing shift. is ready to go. Yeah, he's boiled. He's all ready to rock and roll. Oh, the cake's coming out of the oven. It's great. My wife Ding. is walking around with a fully formed human being inside her. She shot a special last night with a dude wow. in her. You know, there's a dick inside your wife. I uh, believe me. That's all I think about. Same. I, I'm, I'm sketching it at home. It's crazy. Paint me. And yeah. You know, that's my thing. I'm excited. This is all I've ever wanted. It was a, it was a cock inside my wife. What is the? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we got cats here. What is the uh, impulse for women to film a special pregnant? There's nine of them now. Well, this one is just because you know your life is about to be. That's when what you're going to do is. comedy again. That's you might what not. It is. It's not like. She's going to be running sets. Sure. She's doing as much comedy as she can. Now it's like, oh, let me get this out. I love when there's a clear answer to a, like a wonky question. Right. It's like that scene in The Departed. He goes, uh, she goes, why is the, the last patient of the day always the most difficult? Because you're tired. You don't give a shit. It's not supernatural. I love that. Yeah. Well, it's that, that's the thing is like you got to. What is she going to do? Just run her hour and then be like, all right, I'm having the baby. And then six weeks later, I'm shooting my comedy I special. I get it. I get it. So, yeah, we shot it last night, and boy, this is a banger. Get excited. Oh, really? This is better than some cat's bullshit. This is a real special. Hot tamale. You missed the boat on that one there, cats and dogs. We really should have put the camera on cats because he's making some great faces over there. Yeah, I disagree. But, uh, yeah, good point. But uh, maybe the Patreon, the, cat, the cat's go. cam. Cat's cam. That's something. Catastrophe. Uh, but any farts, boy, we had a hell of a night last night. Wait till you see this special butthole money. This is big. Butthole money. What a title. Good title, right? Great title. Butthole surfers. Well, uh, so we did the, the show at Grove 34, which was exciting. And I really Great got room. in there and produced Ooh, this son of an onion. Do you get a credit? You're goddamn right I'm getting I a credit. I hope so. Well, I got uh, we got our old pal Patrick Holbert. No offense, this is awkward because Katz is here. This guy's the director of the premiere specials all over the country. He yeah, looks livid. I'm fine. sorry, but uh, you know you got to go. You're a high end director. You're directing Netflix specials. You're not. This guy's not cheap. No, they got to have a baby. They got to save a couple shekels. I've spent about seventy five thousand dollars, and that's just on my phone bill from chatting with you before the special. <laughs> this guy can text. <laughs> Uh, um, Thank God minutes aren't a thing anymore. Or we'd be uh, breaking the bank chatting with this cat. Uh, cat Cats is the best. He's the greatest. Yeah. I'll never make a special without Jason Cat. I'll say that. Mm. I will produce many specials with you on the bench. But um, my specials, all cats. There you no go. No dogs. You got that right. But anyway, so we put this together. I pal Patrick Holbert uh, directed, and uh, I did a little producing action, which was great. We did Grove 34. I hit up those guys, Rob and Derek. Big shout out great to guys. Rob and Derek over at Grove 34. Hell yeah. These guys are the tops. They're running a killer independent club. I'm doing it once a month. You can see all the behind the scenes on YouTube. You got that right. Go check that out. And uh, so we set it up. They gave us the day. 
Wednesday, the 11th, and uh, which was last night at the time you're hearing this. And, man, we turned it out, packed it out, sold out. We had all kinds of buddies come. Ron was there, Katie Hannigan, oh, Jacob Williams. I love it. Siobhan was hanging out, Holbert, and uh, just a fucking great time. Packed it. Sarah had, like, an adorable dress on. She had a little makeup lady. Oh. She was looking like the money, like the bomb, and just ripped it up. And it was one of those great... Shows the crowd was hot. I did a little warm up. Tracy Canarzo opened, and uh, it's fun doing warm up to give the rules and the stuff. Yeah. And the, hey, let's hear a cheer and a gay and a thing. And uh, that was really fun. And Adrian Appalucci came and hung. Hey, she doesn't show up to anything. Appalucci, and uh, there was just a beautiful night, great show. And then she's so happy to have it done in the can, yes. which is fun. We just did one show, couple pickups. Yes, didn't really even need them. And uh, hot crowd. So thanks to everyone that came out. There was a bunch of twos gays there. There was some lady gays, which hey, I always say is gay. worth. It's worth ten male gays. Oh yeah, I love the male gays. Yeah, it's. I, I find Avert it. I find it offensive, but um, <laughs> yeah, they were awesome, and uh, it was just so fun because it's right down the street from the house. Yes. So I'm hanging out. It's like four p. They're setting up. I go. I'll just come on down. I'll walk over. So you stroll over there and. I was running to get coffee. I was a PA on my own production. Ah, oh, the best. And you can't beat that proximity. No, oh, it was the best. So you could, you could, we just walked out, went to the diner after, had a oh, classic diner hang after. It. And then uh, we went back and fucked, which was fun because oh. you had the, the TV makeup. That's yes. always something. Yeah, leave that on. That was nice. And uh, it was just a fucking great night. So get excited for the special. That'll be on her YouTube probably in 2026. We're having a baby. Our whole lives are going to end. Butthole money. I hate to ask. You got a turnaround date? A a ballpark? I'm not sure. I mean, usually mine, I sit on them so I can recoup the material. Recoup. But she's on break. So Maternity leave. We could probably just flip it around. I don't know. Holbert's got 17 projects going, ah. including the Tom Dustin doc. Get excited for that. That's getting ready. It's, it's bubbling. Hell yeah. And I got to uh, plug that on Rogan, so I'm sure the 11 people that were still listening at the end of the show are get excited for that. Wow. Good for Sarah. She's got a special and a special needs. Both yeah. coming out. Very gonna be exciting. exciting. So, uh, yeah, the baby's a few days old, and uh, we're having a great time, I hope, I think. I but love it. What a night. And see, that's you got to love it when it works out, because if that would have gone horribly... Could you imagine just the the devastation of like, okay, now we got to go home. It's awkward. We're not going to fuck. And we didn't get any tape. Right. But we knew it was going to be great because that room is so good. Great Here's the thing about a special. You don't need a big room. You just need a full room. Yes. So there's 50 people in there, and she's just killing. The laughs sound amazing. And the la- she was killing so hard, it's going to be one of those ones where, like, fake laughs, which they love oh, to say. I but love that shit. It was rocking, but a full room is a full room. Oh, that's great. And, and that room, the walls banging all around. Those laughs really carry. Yeah, I might film there. It's a, yeah. it's a fun room because you just feel so relaxed. Yes, and um, no stakes. I was thinking about doing the next one at the Village Underground. What do you think of that? Mm, it's a good room. By the way, how about this? Somebody, I went, I went to do this on stage. Somebody messaged or commented, and they wrote... Uh, you get it, the bricks are too distracting. You got to do something with the bricks. Ah, They're distracting. Ah, bricks. Bricks are distracting. <laughs> have you seen comedy ever? Stand up comedy, the art form. I'm like, my specials have 13 million views. You're the one single person that's been like, the bricks are a little distracting. Just give that a good old thumbs down. Don't even engage with a with a comment. Just <laughs> you're done. Every improv, every that's the background. It's the classic background. I can't watch basketball. The hardwood. It's, you know, uh, it's a little distracting. It's it's yellow. It's shiny. The bricks are too much, but uh, yeah, bricked it. Parquet. Brick house. Yes, brick town. Brick Boy, Bronson's this weekend. Uh, but good for her, and uh, hell yeah, I can't wait to see it. That's exciting. I, it's fun to see a pregnant lady talk. Speaking of pregnant ladies, I saw Chris Christie in the airport the other day. Hey, yeah, he's... Matt Wayne and I walked to the airport, and uh, this big lard of shit was walking by, and I hey. said, hey, look at that, it's Chris Christie. <laughs> he and, is rotund. And Matt thought I was doing the, like, oh, hey, look yeah. at this, it's Chris Christie, but it was actually him walking through. <laughs> he thought he was going to see Big J. Yeah. He's like, no, no, it's actually, I saw him at the New, it was at Newark. No, this is LaGuardia. Oh, uh, I saw him at Newark once at the, the handshakes. He was glad handing. Oh, really? Yeah, that he must suck because you got to get to your flight. I know. He was stuck in clear, and you could tell he was like, hey, nice to be out. Hey, hey. And they were, he was like trying to get through with the eyeballs, and they're like, sir, you got it. He's like, I know. I'm just trying to. Uh, it was really awkward. Well, it reminds me of the time, I think I, I told the story when it happened years ago. When I was in Iowa, I got stuck from a snowstorm, and it was the night of the Iowa debates. 
And it, what was the guy's name? Martin. I can't Scarelli. remember. No, it was Hillary and Bernie, and there was a third guy. Amino. He was like a Baltimore mayor. Can we look that up? I think his name was Martin something. Martin. He was like Scorsese. the future of the party. Future of the party. And uh, I've never heard of him again. He was the third candidate, but I saw him the night after the debates at the airport just by himself reading the newspaper, and I was like, that's not a good sign. Ooh, yeah. Martin O'Malley, yeah. And I walked up and I said, hey, Mr. O'Malley. And he, oh, hey. And he folded up the paper and said, hey, how do you do? <laughs> He's reading the and one I, ads. And I said it to him. Just to, I didn't feel it, but I just to, to uh, give him some love as a, as a comedian, I said, I think you're the future of the oh, party. Oh, what a guy. And he said, well, I appreciate that. And I said, you did a fantastic job. I didn't watch the debate. I said, you did a fantastic <laughs> job, and I think you're the future. That's a good egg. Because the guy, I mean, he was getting point zero 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 negative one percent of the vote at the I, time. I thought he was a baseball player. No, Marty O'Malley. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's dead or something. I don't know what the hell happened to well, him. I think it was a little gunshot in the mouth that night, probably. But uh... Well, they say losing election is one of the most painful things you can deal with. Really? You know, Al Gore has the beard. They go in the woods. Remember, Hillary was in the woods hanging. Yes, yes, she got a beard as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's it's really devastating because you put all millions yeah. and millions of dollars, all your time, all your the effort. Campaign. You fly out of the country, and then the entire nation is like, no, yeah, we don't like that. Yes, you suck. Well, that's why there's so much election fraud. It was rigged. You have to do that just to live with yourself. I think sometimes people like look at Trump. He's like, it was fake, fake news. The ballots, ball. You, I think he can't handle it, so he's got to make up shit. Sure, certainly. What we went a couple hundred years without doing that. Before you were like, ah, you beat me. Take care. Yeah, but I, I bet people were sour. Well, they were sour, but they didn't come out and say, ah, it's all fake. But yeah. now everyone does it. That's like the move now. I know, because the lefties did it, I don't know, 2016, then he did it in 2020, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, anyway, so Marty O'Malley, why did I bring that up? Oh, I saw Chris Christie at the airport. That there was fun. That was go. just a couple. How about this? I got my car in a garage over here in uh, Astoria, Queens. Donald Duck. He was proud of that one. Ooh, that was bad. That was bad. That did not land. And he, you can tell he he got he hired eight writers. He got four Jews in a room, and that's what they came up with. And he bombed. I'm sure he felt the trickle of sweat in addition to all the trickles that were already sweating because he's oh, a fat He's got guy. The, the meat sweats. Uh, <laughs> poor guy. I like him. He's a likable guy. He's but, fat. Uh, fat people are fun. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> My cat's is taking a beating. Oh, we love you, Catsy. For the cat's record, jelly. cat's not a fat guy at all. Oh, no, I'd say husky. Ah. Good dog. Anyways, so uh, I go to the parking garage. Now, the parking garage, you've been there. It's yeah. in a, it's in a ba- it's an underground dwelling, but they, there's like a huge uh, elevator. Yes. What do you call that? A freight, freight elevator that they have to take the car. They have to go down to the basement, get the car. So I go there, I get my car, and you te- the way it works is you text uh, some number, you write car, yes. and then it texts back and says eight minutes. I love this. That's standard. That's, so so then, that's like the Batmobile. And it takes exactly eight minutes. When I text from my house, I walk over there, it's always pulling out, it's beautiful. And uh, Oh, machine. So I get there, and I'm waiting, and uh, no car, and I'm like, that's interesting. Usually there's a car there, and uh, I kind of look it around, I'm like, well, he'll be out, I'm sure. Three minutes pass, a couple more minutes pass. I'm just sitting there, and I just hear, like, mm. and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Mm. Kidnap victim, whore in a trunk? What well, do we got? It felt like the end of uh, Prisoners. I'm like, woo, woo, woo. That's good and I, I'm like looking around, like, what the fuck? Deaf person. And then I walk over to the freight, and there's a little, you know, triangle, and the guy's like, I'm stuck in here. Oh. He's like, the elevator broke. Oh, wow. And I can't really see him. I just hear him. And I'm like, what? And he's like, it was like Back to the Future. He's like, no, no, the keys are in here. Like, my car is sitting in the fucking thing. And I go, what? And I try. I'm a a good person. So I went, are you okay? Like, do you need me to call 911? Is there someone I can call? Yeah. And he's like, we're stuck between two floors. Oh. So it broke. So his head, he was like, your doctor. His head is right at my dick. So I'm like leaning down. I can't see him because it's so dark in there. It's coming up. So like I'm standing here. His he's standing in his head. It was coming up. It stopped. His head is like dick height. Yes, yes. And I'm like, all right. Well, can I call somebody? And he's like, no, no. I already called. They're coming. Yeah. And I go, well, 
can I ask how long? He's like, I don't know. That's the thing. They don't tell you. So we're uh, talking. It's a very funny situation. Yeah. I'm talking through a wall to right. a guy who's stuck. And you can see the car. I see the car. It's not my car, though. Oh, interesting. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess uh, what can we do as long as you're all right? He's like, yeah, I'm all right. And I'm like, okay. So then you're like, do I stand here and make small talk? Where are you from? No, no, you get out of there. You go you go to your gig or whatever. I can't go to my gig. My car's in the basement, in the garage. Oh, you, there's no train. You can't take a train. No, no, I'm going to Philly? Massachusetts. Oh. I'm going to take my dad to surgery. So I I, he's up in Boston. Luckily, I'm going up the day before. This is why you leave the day before. There you go. So I'm just sitting there. So I'm like, all right. So I just stand there like, hopefully this doesn't take too long. You're also annoyed because you're like, well, I have to. if I had to be somewhere... I would be furious because I pay fucking seven thousand five hundred and fifty eight dollars a day at yeah, this place. They rape you anally on those car park prices. When I first got the garage, I don't want to say the numbers because people get upset when you tell them how much <laughs> you spend on things. It's crazy. It's New York City. What do you want? But I'll just say it was Y, and now it's Y to like the third power. Oh, it's it went like, up. Not the third power, but it's more. It keeps oh, going up. Oh, I hate when it goes up. And that's how they get you because. The gr- it's so convenient I know. that you're like, oh, I'm taking my car out. But then you're like, well, garages are hard to find. And I'm yeah. like, I don't want to move my car. Yeah. And then the snow and the thing. So they you're like, you it's so valuable that you're like, well, it's only 40 bucks it went up. What are you going to do? 40 bucks more a month. They, they know that. Then they do 30 more dollars a month. And next thing you know, you're like, I'm paying 28% more than yes. when we came up with this deal. And now you have my car stuck in a fucking elevator. Stuck in the elevator. So right. I'm just standing there like... Afraid to get. Looking at my phone, and uh, he's in there. We're both just standing. All of a sudden, I just hear like, <laughs> and the guy like he shit himself. Superman's it open. He's like, Gah! and he lifts because the, the door closes like this, like, with, uh, yeah, yeah. like from the top and the bottom. And Indiana he like Jones. He just cranks and he gets his foot on the bottom. And so I run over and I try to like put my foot. And he's like, get your foot out of there, because like he's, you know, he can sue or whatever. Yeah, he, just, he yeah. can't have like a fucking employee or what do you call him. What am Patron. I? Patron losing yes. a foot in there. I don't want to lose a foot. Patreon. Uh, diabetes. So he pulls it open. He steps out of the thing. It's like two feet, and it's just a Jeep. And I'm like, ah, so that's not my car, which is good because the car is stuck. And he's like, yeah, man, it sucks. I don't know what the fuck. He's like pouring sweat. He's yeah. crying. He's got blood on his dick. And I'm like, ah, oh, geez, like, so what do we do? And he's like, I'll be back. And then he goes downstairs to get my car. Okay. So I got to just hope. It works. He's yeah. down there for about 10 minutes. Finally, the door is open because there's two garages. I see. Gar- door number two opens. He pulls my car out. It's a sight for sore anal. Oh, yeah. And I go, okay, so do you need? And he's like, just get out of here. I'm sorry about that. And I was like, well, good luck. I hope. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. So how much time do you think you, you lost over there? Only about 12 minutes. But oh, 12 minutes right. is significant if you're just sitting there. But sure. Luckily, it was a leisurely cruise. I was taking my dad to uh, surgery because I'm a good boy. Yeah, you're a good egg. And this guy's a hero. I mean, he made it work and that's what desperation will do to you it'll it'll kick you up a notch well, i was so grateful he got the fucking car out of there because it was one of those things where you're like uh my whole purpose of me going up there is to have a car sure to drive and, wow uh, well, so many questions one how, how dad must uh that's the problem is you want to go hey dad you don't know what i went through to get this this car out of an elevator and they go yeah whatever huh what you gonna bake it or not? Well, he was sweet. I got a good text. Okay. A nice text, and uh, that's all you need at this point in life. A good the, text. The bar is low for Steve List. I'll tell you that. He he gives you a, a hello, and I'm like, we got off easy. But it was fun. It was like a pilgrimage. I drove up there. I'm listening to the tunes, the Springsteen, the Love dad it. stuff, and uh, went up. And you feel like a hero because you know my mother can't drive in the city. It's crazy and all that stuff. Yeah. And we drove up there. He was a nervous. I had to have a face surgery. They put him Ooh. down or whatever, and he had some sinus bullshit. My dad had the same thing. Yeah, he's all fucked up. Well, that's the thing. You get older, it all just starts coming apart. Falling apart at the seams. Yeah, but it, it does feel cool to go be the, uh, I'm not a hero, but when my grandmother died, they're like, we're doing the funeral tomorrow. Tomorrow, and I said, I'll be there. I, it was like, book it. It was yeah. just fun to just, I canceled everything and went down there. Went yeah, it down feels to good. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and went to a church and watched a lady get buried. Cat's still working the AirPods over there. Ooh. But uh, once but, they're in, they're in. Yeah, you drove up, and for you, it's, for me, it's nice. To me, it's, I mean, dad, it's the worst day of his life. He's terrified. He sure. thinks he's going to die, the whole thing. I dropped him off in the city. I just strolled around Public Gardens, Boston Common. I'm getting a coffee. I hit a meeting, walking around the Charles River, and <clears throat> I come back, and they're like, we drove back. We watched a movie together. We watched Midnight Run, hey. which was fun. Classic. Great. And uh, 
you feel good. And then we moved outside, backyard, beautiful day. And they're like, thank you so much. And I'm like, that was great. Yeah. We watched a movie. I walked around the city. Fantastic. Had a great time. Then you, then you drive back. I got to say, your car people, first of all, you're lucky there was no language barrier. Right. That's tough when they're in the elevator, like, I don't, don't, but, do, 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 do. and you're like, I don't know what you're saying. What are we going to do here? Yeah. Was that the Indian joke? Yeah, that was it. So I cut it. But uh, the second thing is your car people are so much nicer than mine. Oh, I, yeah. I go, hey, can I get my car out in about three days? And they go, could you call earlier next time? And I'm like, oh, geez, sorry. I gave you a seven-day window here, but they don't like that. Well, the system is good. The, the text yes. message system is nice. But I've had it where I've returned it, and they're like, eh, yeah, it's a little late. And you're uh, like, all yeah. right, well, it's 10 minutes till midnight. You're supposed to have it by midnight. Yeah, exactly. I'm early. I'm early. They, they shame a little bit, and they, yeah. they, they charge you a million miles a month or a million dollars a month, and then they shame you. It's, it's a tough system. Well, I think the thing is that job sucks because there's so much turnover. Every time I go there, it's just a different guy. Oh. But I think it probably pays fucking $4 an hour, right, and right. you're just sitting there moving cars. And then – I'm never there at like rush hour, but I've been there a couple times where you're just like, there's seven cars. People want their cars all at once. Yeah. And it's like Costanza. Right. He's got 20 keys he's juggling. But my place is in the village. It's a staple. It's a lot of rich people going in and out of there. And these guys have been there for 50 years. Like, hey, George. You know, he knows everybody. They all know the names. They pet the kid's head. Hey, Billy, good to see you again. They're all in the in cahoots, but... Apparently, I've used my car a lot less than you use yours. Yeah. I got a vintage 50-year-old Beamer, so I just joyride it maybe once a month. So I got hit with this one. Christmas time, they go, hey, uh, we're cool, me and you. And I go, yeah. And he goes, just saying, a lot of the guys are mad at you. And I was like, oh. what did I do? And they go, uh, you never gave the, the bonus. They want that cake. And I'm like, wait a minute. I, I come here 12 times a year. Right. But they, they kind of stood around me in a semicircle, and they were like, yeah, what's up with that Christmas car? <laughs> like huh? the Van Buren boys. Yeah, exactly. And I was up against the wall. I said, whoa, all right, all right. And I ran out to CVS, and I put a nice <laughs> Finsky in that uh, Hallmark <laughs> and called it a life. Yeah, it's tricky. That's the problem with being a wealthy person. You gotta you owe everybody money. I you got to be handing out money left and right. Well, they keep saying the rich get richer, but you're like, I'm throwing money out like uh, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy, the, it's a weird to get shamed for a bonus. Right. And, and I paid him, don't get me wrong. I gave him a nice fat one because I didn't want to get uh, beat up. Gave him some show posters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Sent yeah. him on their way. I gave him a Haver hat and a comedy shirt. I like this Haver hat. It's soft, it's nice. I'm, Use Haver Supply. Whatever they supply, I have no idea. You're going to have to give them a Google. I don't know what the hell they sell. Yeah. But uh, Haver Supply, some of the best supply in the business. Good supply, and uh, don't never, get high on it. I've never had supply this good. You don't want to try yours on? Nah, I don't love it. Haver Supply, recently established. Oh, look at that. It's a, it's a skeleton surfing with his eyes folded. Ah. Or an eye fold. What's it called? I don't know. I can't see it. A blind? A blindfold. Blindfold. I knew fold was in there. Eye fold sounds like something you... By the way, blind has got to go away soon. I hope. Well, you got blind spot, blind date, and blindfold. Almost. (laughs) But I'm just saying, you know, you, you can't say this, you can't say deaf or mute. Hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, I think it's a little slippery back here. It's a slick wall. Anyways, Haver Supply, best. Yeah, blind is no good. I'm just saying it's going to go some point. Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. Who will die first, you think? I'm going to go Ray. (laughs) Is he dead? I think he's dead. I think he died a while back, actually. Remember this? You got the right one, baby. Uh Uh Uh-huh. That was huge. Is it Coca-Cola? I think that was Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah, that was the right one. Great. Pepsi's out. What that, happened to Pepsi? That was massive. You got the right one, baby. How about uh-huh. these people? The, uh, last week we did a whole number on people who have uh, superstition, ghost, luck. How about the fate? Ah, uh, fate. Yeah, well, it was meant to happen. Oh, yeah, my mom was meant to get cancer. Well, you know. Yeah, fate. Fate. As fate would have it. Fate. Feels better because it's like in the past. Mm. You're 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 putting a positive spin, right? Like you're like, well, she died in a car. That was her fate. It's still bad, but it's better than like. I think it's worse. Yeah, yeah. She was meant to go. Like she was supposed to die. Fuck yeah, her. God needed her. Yeah, 
Fate, and they do it for future too. They go, oh, that's my fate. I gotta move to New York, and I'm gonna make it big. It's my fate. Right. Like, what does that mean, fate? It's it's too close to faith as well. Faith and fate. Yeah. And they're similar. It's like a law firm, faith and fate. Look at this little scroll that uh, Kat's oh. made. What can't you do? You're a talented man. Oh yeah. Uh, let me throw this out real Please. quick because I've been wanting to address this, and I think it speaks. Oh, oh my god! Jesus, that's twofer. That's crazy. Twofer. You got to stop doing that. Uh, apparently, or keep doing it for money. That's bad for your head. I gotta go to a carnival. Uh, try it with the mug. Yeah, Mug Costanza. Um, I got to address this because we did the AirPod story back in August, whatever that yeah, was. Yeah, big hit. And we got about I got about seven hundred messages, and I think it speaks to our society. I think society's crumbling. It's a real problem. These conspiracy theories are out of control. I blame Rogan. I got three hundred and fifty <laughs> messages going. JP had your AirPods the whole time, you idiot. I, I can't even describe how many comments, messages, emails that said JP had the AirPods. He didn't have the fucking AirPods. Uh, you weren't there. I was there. I talked to the man. He was there. He fucking watched us follow the AirPods to him, to his work. Why would he not just go, oh, shit, here they are. Why would he then take them to his home? Yes, yes. When he knows that we've traced them and we're going to continue to trace them, that we're going to show them up. It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make His sense. story makes perfect sense, except the only part that doesn't make sense. I think he was balling the lady who stole the AirPods. Ooh. That's what I suspect. All right. That's the only part that we think might be a lie. But he didn't have the AirPods. He was a good man and uh, had a nice smile. I looked in his eyes, this man, and it doesn't make any sense for him to have had the AirPods the whole time. No, but I love how it's gospel. Like, I think this, so that's how it is. It's 100%. Like, you don't even know. You're just uh, assuming, and all of a sudden it's written in concrete. Yeah, you have the least amount of information, and why would he go like, well, that's safe. Now that, now that I've given him my phone number, my name, and he knows where I work and the AirPods are... I think I'm safe to take them to my home now. Yeah. And then you think he was like, oh my God, they're still looking for them. Yeah. It, it doesn't just... make any sense. He didn't have them. Then he saw the address. He recognized the address because he had a side piece, possibly, or he was invited to the bar, whatever it is. Yeah, and he went life. and got them. He went and got the AirPods from the lady. He's a good man. I'll die on that fucking hill. And you don't even know what you're talking about. You no. have so little information. It's the same with all these fucking conspiracy yeah, theories that you're like, the I know more than all the doctors, even though I've never studied any of this fucking shit ever once. Yes, exactly. But look, I think Monez had him. So you don't don't talk to me. I think he had him the whole time. Well, he's a suspicious character. Yeah. He's a beautiful man. But you're right. People catastrophize, they conspiracize, they love it, they live for it, and it's uh it's silly and grow up. You you might be wrong. People need to realize I might be wrong. Perhaps I'm wrong. That doesn't Come into people's uh, zeitgeist. Well, I got some big dates coming up. Not really, but November right. 17th and 18th, I am at DC Improv. I'm excited, and I apologize. I had to bail on the Thursday show. I just don't want to be gone from my baby so long. Chocolate city. So if, the, if, you were gonna, if you're available to go Thursday and you're not available to go Friday, Saturday, I'm sorry, but I assumed uh, you'll be all right, but I want to be with my child. And uh, DC Improv, Friday, Saturday. Be there. Tacoma in January. Ooh, Tacoma. Check out the special. Enough for everybody. Leave a comment. Get that thing back in the fucking algorithm. I think we got fucked by the uh, C word. I really do. I really think oh, yeah. that fucked me. You can look at last year's special and this year's special. You can see exactly when it dips is when it lost the advertising. Of course, of course. That's the exact moment it dipped. So, and I had three times as many subscribers. We're competing with a lot more now, I guess. But but it's annoying that YouTube won't cop to it. Also, just tell us that's what it is. Don't deny it. Yeah, it's very suspicious. But it's a fucking killer special, directed by the great Jason Katz, <whistles> one of the best. And uh, so check that out. Go watch that. Check out Mindful Metal Jacket on uh, YouTube and all the podcast places. And uh, the Patreon. Patreon is hot. It's cooking. It's it's uh, it's humming. We're maybe. about to do a bonus. We did a great Q and A the other day. That, that was, was maybe our best. That was very uh, very fun. And uh, all the live shit is fucking killer. So go check that out. Here, Where are you here. gonna be, dude? 
Uh, I will be all over the road. New dates added. Uh, coming to Texas, Florida, Phoenix, Denver, Philly, you name it. Uh, MarkNormanComedy.com. And, uh, yeah, I got special on Netflix as well. Give it a double like out there. And, uh, yeah, praise Allah. Keep on rocking. And uh, live it up, folks. See you now.